Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. I'm so excited to say that we just passed 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. I cannot thank you guys enough for all of your support. And we went ahead and asked you over on Facebook and Twitter what you'd want to see to celebrate this event. And the most requested thing was to just find out what a day was like here at BHB. So that's what this week's show is going to be about. You're watching Snake Bites. <laughs> The day-to-day -day grind at BHB can really differ depending on the time of the year it is. Right now it happens to be colubrid breeding season as well as we're wrapping up the boa and python breeding season too. So each day we have to make sure that males get in with females. Let's face it, if you don't have males in with females you're not going to get successful breeding, that's for darn sure. So again, we have to go through each one of these cages and make sure that the right male gets in with the right female. I tell you what, it may not seem like a big deal just plopping a male into a female's cage, but trust me, when you have thousands of cages to do it, it's really an important and difficult job. But again, it's kind of fun because when you are switching males and females, it's pretty cool to just go ahead and see what's gonna breed. Again, when you throw a male in, you think about it. Well, I wonder what the babies are gonna look like when these two animals have eggs. So it's an exciting time of the year, but it's still a lot of work. And again, we've gotta do this entire clover row, and there's four rows of them to boot. We also have to do a lot of boas and pythons too. Let's move into the python room. What's one of Brian's favorite YouTube channels? A, Smosh. B, Epic Food Time. C, Kassim G. Go ahead and comment down below and watch later in the show to find out the answer. Now in the python and boa room, things are at a different pace here. We're actually wrapping up the breeding season with most of them and kind of going into the breeding season with others. But with ball pythons, we've got to make sure that we're putting the right males in with the right females at the right time of the year. Things like this pin pied need to go on with this pin head pied right away so that we can get that last breeding in and hopefully she's going to ovulate soon. Again, about 90% of these animals are already done breeding, but some boas are just starting like rainbow boas and Amazon tree boas. But hey, it's not all about snakes anymore. We're also doing lizard stuff. So let's go check out the leopard geckos. Now when it comes to lizards and leopard geckos in particular, it's a little bit of a learning curve for me. I've been a snake guy for 25 years, but these little creatures with legs are a little bit interesting. But they really breed the same way as colubrids or most of our other boas and pythons. You just have to get the male and the female at the right time. This happens to be a male, and you can kind of see that because it has what they call femoral pores and these bulges at the base of the tail. Once I've got that male, I just need to make sure he gets into the next female's cage. Now what's interesting about leopard geckos is you'll actually see ovulations in them. Let me pull this female aside and show you exactly what I mean. You can look at the belly and you can see through where the eggs are starting to develop. That's exactly when you want that male in with the female. What's also interesting is that they retain sperm for a long period of time. So it's not that bad to breed them because once that female lays a good clutch of eggs, you pretty much know she's gonna lay two, three, four good clutches before that male needs to get back in her. But we again, take these males just like this and we make sure that we put them down in the right cage at least two or three times a week we're switching males. Again, it's a lot of work, but during the breeding season, switching males is a big part of our days. The majority of what I do is really fun and exciting like breeding snakes, but the truth is whenever you're dealing with a lot of animals, and certainly when you're breeding them, part of your day is gonna be spent with problems. Things like animals not eating properly and trying to figure out how to give them the best care they possibly can, or even something like this male leopard gecko. You can see right here, yesterday he prolapsed one of his hemipenes, which just basically means one of its hemipenes is hanging out. Well, obviously we can't breed the animal right now, and we certainly wanna save its ability to breed in the future. So you have to figure out what the best options are to make sure the animal's health and future breeding is taken care of. With this particular animal, we're going to go ahead and keep them on damp paper towel because what you don't want to have happen is that hemipene to dry up because once it dries up, it's going to fall off. Another trick with this particular animal is that we can put some powdered sugar on it and sometimes, believe it or not, that'll cause the hemipene to suck up. I tell you what, I wish it was just one leopard or gecko a day that we have issues with. There's always something that you have to take care of when you're dealing with animals. 
Unfortunately, the majority of the issues that we have as far as care for the animals, we work out and things work out pretty well. And fortunately, the majority of the time, there are cool things happening like egg season. Again, we're still breeding colubrids, but they're already starting to lay eggs. And that's really the funnest part of my job is collecting little gems like this. Look at this huge clutch of pearly white eggs. This is actually a Jelly Brooks King bred to another Jelly Brooks, actually head for albino, because the albino jellies are really, really amazing. Amazing. But just look at these beautiful eggs. There's one over in the corner here. There's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen eggs. And look at the size of this girl. She's not that big. Fourteen big eggs. I'm always amazed when I'm pulling clutches like this, just how much mass the eggs have compared to the snakes herself. But again, we have to go through each and every day during this time of year and make sure that we set up the eggs properly. We're going to put them into vermiculite that has plenty of water. We're going to make sure that we mark in our egg data books what laid as well as on the egg box so we know when they're hatching. We know exactly who the dam and the sire is. But there's going to be plenty of eggs to find today. So let's go ahead and look and see what else we've got. We pulled 32 clutches of colubrid eggs so far. It's about 300 eggs with about a dozen slugs or so. This is the last snake of the day that has eggs in the colubrid room. And for whatever reason, I always want to end my eggs with a 100% fertile clutch. I guess it's a snake breeder superstition. If I get a good clutch of eggs at the end, I feel like tomorrow's eggs have a better chance of being fertile. I know it sounds completely ridiculous, but it's really cool because sure enough, there's a beautiful pearly white clutch right here. There's six eggs, no slugs. That means tomorrow's gonna be awesome. Now this is a Pueblin milk snake that laid, and she's actually in pretty good shape, which means we're gonna probably be able to get her for a second clutch. I'll probably do a show on that here in the near future about how we rebreed snakes for a second time. And with all the eggs we're starting to get, you can assure yourself that I'm gonna do a, a whole show just on collecting eggs and all the cool stuff we've got going on. But we're wrapping up the Kluber room, but hey, we have some ball python eggs I wanna show you guys. Okay, so we're here in the python room and we've got several clutches of ball pythons today. The one I wanna show you first is this albino ball python that's 100% hat for clown. And she was bred to an albino clown male. And you can see she's wrapped around these pearly whites. Let's see what she got. What you wanna do is just literally, just very gently unwrap her from the eggs and hopefully not roll the eggs at all and get her off. Sometimes they can be a little feisty. But let's see what we got here. Okay, it looks like we've got four fertile eggs, and unfortunately there's one slug. But again, your odds are 50% of these babies should be albino clowns, which I'm not gonna complain about at all. You know, sure, I guess we'd all want eight or 10 eggs, right? But she's a relatively small female. She did really well. Now what we're gonna do with these girls is we're gonna wash them off, we're gonna switch their bedding and hopefully get them onto food. But there's an exciting clutch that I really wanna show you guys. There's been some controversy whether or not super cinnamon females will lay eggs. Well, guess what? I wanna show you right now. We're gonna be real gentle because she's just laying. We don't wanna interrupt her. But this is a super cinnamon female that's being bred to a killer kingspin. So there's a lot of potential there. And it looks like the entire clutch is perfect. She's almost done. I'm not sure if she's got one more egg left in her or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and just close this up really gently. Leave her alone. I'll come back and pull that clutch away maybe an hour or two from now. But as you can see, it's an exciting time of the year. It's one of the things we do every single day during this time of year, collecting eggs. But you know what? Sometimes just running the crew can be a real challenge. There's always so much work to be done in the colubrid room. We are busy in here 100% of the time. We're feeding every single snake in here on Mondays and Thursdays. On Tuesdays and Fridays, we're checking every single snake to see what ate and what didn't ate. In addition to that, every day I go through each and every one of these snakes and I have to put tags on snakes that are gonna be laying soon. I gotta put lay boxes in them. We have to check to see if snakes laid and tag them so that Brian can pull the eggs out of there. And we have to rotate males to keep the process going. It is a never ending process in here. A lot of work and it's very important that we use our time super effectively in here. 
Walmart pythons are an Australian python, and they're truly a beautiful snake. They only get about six. We started Snake Bites over five years ago, having no idea how many people would actually watch. And although it's an amazing experience and we love doing it, it's certainly a big part of our daily routine. Whether it's coming up with ideas, going through pre-production, actually filming the show, and of course, post-production and promotion, it certainly is a big part of what we do here. But trust me, it's worth every minute of it. Let's not forget what I do for a living, which is sell my baby offspring snakes. That's how we keep the bills paid and the lights on, right? So every day we get orders for people that want specific snakes. We have to make sure that we're inspecting the animals, that they're 100% healthy, and that our customers are gonna be happy. Then we have to bag them up, make sure they get into insulated boxes, heat packs or cold packs, depending on what time of the year, and get them shipped so you have them the next thing tomorrow morning. Emails, phone calls, and social media eat up so much of my day. Everyone knows that I'm a complete Twitter-holic, and I love the fact that I can interact with everyone that supports me, not to mention all of the travel I do. I'm always on the road somewhere, but bottom line, guys, I cannot thank you enough for all you've done to support us. If it wasn't for you guys, we could never have done this for five and a half years, and I can only hope that we'll be able to do it for five and a half years longer. Without you guys, just don't know what I would do. So again, thank you for the 100,000 subs. Let's keep this thing going. Thanks for subscribing to us, guys. It really means a lot, and it's so cool to see everyone supporting us the way they do. Thanks. We want to thank you guys so much for being fans. It's you guys who make this show go on. Thanks. Thanks, everybody, for supporting the show. We couldn't do it without you. Reaching 100,000 subscribers was so cool for us. It really shows how much you guys support us, and it's awesome. Now, over the years, we've done a lot of shows about a lot of things, and I want to know from you guys, what do you want to see in the future from this show? What direction do you want it to go in? Leave a comment below and let us know. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show and get a little bit of an idea what it's like every single day here at BHB. Again, we cannot thank each and every one of you enough for all your support hitting this milestone. Let's go ahead and hit 500,000 next, guys. And if you want to follow any of my animal adventures, make sure to hit me up over on Facebook and Twitter at Snake Bites TV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. What's one of Brian's favorite YouTube channels? If you answered C, Kasim G, you were right. Good job. And again, the tiger retic is a co-dominant mutation. I tell you, when you're dealing with retics, the one thing is they love to run. And this guy is no exception to that. It's not that it's a mean animal whatsoever, it's just they like to just run through your hands and keep moving, so it's always a challenge. And you can imagine when this animal is 18 or 20 foot long, how difficult it's going to be to handle. Now again.